Hello, and welcome to Scripture of the Day. Today's chapter is 2 Kings 12, where we have a boy king. Can you imagine if a seven-year-old was the next president of the United States? What would you do if you were president of the United States? Tell people about the gospel. Tell people the gospel? Yeah. That's an awesome answer. Wow. What do you think you would do if you were president? You were the boss of the whole country, like the queen. What would you do on your first day as the boss of America? Read the Bible. Read the Bible. I would tell everyone to worship God. That's a good answer. I would send out um, some newspapers to the people who do not believe in God and say almost everybody can believe in God. That's such a good answer. Thank you so much. Tell people to honor God with, with giving them free Bibles. You would give everyone free Bibles and tell them to honor God? These answers are amazing. I hope whoever gets elected will do this when they're president. Right before we get to 2 Kings 12, it says that Jehoash became king when he was seven years old. How did that go? Well, it actually says that he did what was right in the sight of the Lord because he was instructed by Jehoiada the priest. And it makes me think of all these precious kids we have here in our kids ministry and of our faithful servants who instruct the kids every single week. I'm so thankful for all of our leaders here in the kids ministry. If you were here at church this weekend, you heard Pastor Josh preach and mission ready. Because Lord willing, we're planning a church in Long Beach, February 2nd, 2025. And whenever I'm here, but I'm not preaching, I love to usher. It's my secret passion. They gave me one of the shirts. I love ushering and I love to see what the other ministries are doing. And so we spent some time in the kids' ministry. And I had such a legacy that was given to me in my life by faithful people serving in kids' ministry at church, by my own parents who read me this read and grow picture Bible. I was taught the word of the Lord so that when I grew old, I would not depart from it. And as we go from one church to two churches and all these people are stepping up in their roles in ministry, guess where a lot of people are stepping up from? The kids' ministry. And so they're gonna need new volunteers to instruct the kids in the word of the Lord, just to be there with the kids and keep the young ones safe. And so maybe that's a way you could step up to serve as we go from one church to two churches. And so if you're interested in kids ministry, email taylor at compasshb.com right now. Pastor Taylor will be overjoyed to hear from you and talk with you about serving the kids. And so read in the story from today's chapter, 2 Kings 12, it reminded me of the story in the Read and Grow Picture Bible. But when I opened up the Read and Grow Picture Bible, and by the way, if you don't have the Read and Grow Picture Bible for your kids, your grandkids, or, or just for your own personal edification, it doesn't actually say kids Bible. It just says picture Bible. Shout out to all the dads who have learned something reading this book. If you don't have one of these, you should be stalking by the book nook and I, I meant to say stopping by the book note, but stock it, do it. I mean, and see if they have them stocked because they sell out every time we restock. We're buying them up all over the internet, trying to get them to you. But I love reading this Bible, best children's Bible I've ever read. And what a legacy it was that when I hear about the boy king in 2 Kings 12, I immediately remember the story from the Read and Grow Picture Bible. Now, when I reread re this, yes, I reread it sometimes. And when I reread it, I observed three things that were different from this 
than 2 Kings. So even though it says it's getting it from 2 Kings 11 and 12, and that's where I've been reading through, Kings with all of you, they actually pulled some of it from 2 Chronicles 24. This is a critical cross-reference for today's chapter. If you haven't read 2 Chronicles 24 yet to go along with today's chapter, you're welcome, okay? Because both of these take us through what's going on in the line of David, Kings and Chronicles. And, and so 2 King Chronicles 24 is gonna give you the behind the scenes of 2 Kings 12. In fact, a couple of things that are going to become very important if you do go over to 2 Chronicles 24 is you're going to see that after the death of Jehoiada, something really changed when Jehoiada died. In fact, it says that after that, even though Jehoash or Joash, it's confusing because his name is different in Kings than it is in Chronicles. So if you're confused, I can totally understand why. But Jehoash, as he's known in Kings, even though he seems so ambitious about getting the temple repaired, after Jehoiada, the priest who instructed him, dies, it seems like he doesn't really care about the temple that much. Remember how in 2 Kings 12 it says he just gave away some of the gold, some of the devoted things uh, to Hazael of Syria? Well, here it says that they actually abandoned the house of the Lord, and even though God sent them prophets, they didn't listen to them. So one of the things that's really encouraged me reading through Kings is to see an example of discipleship happen. Remember back in 1 Kings 19 when Elijah was in his low. Remember how God said he had more for Elijah to do, and he was going to pass it on to the prophet Elisha. He also said he was going to anoint two people, Hazael to be king of Syria and Jehu to be king of Israel. Wow, that just happened in our reading this last week since our last video. Elisha is actually the one who told Hazael he would be king of Syria. And Elisha's the one who anointed Jehu. So it did get passed down successfully. Elijah, he went up in the whirlwind. Elisha continued his work here on earth. Man, as we're in a season of sending out here at Compass HB, seeing that successful discipleship go from Elijah to Elisha, that Elisha completes the work that God gave Elijah to do, that has really encouraged me. But this story, from Jehoiada to Jehoash, this is a failure of discipleship. When Jehoash is a boy and Jehoiada, the priest, is instructing him, he walks in a good way, he does what is right in the sight of the Lord. After Jehoiada dies, he loses the plot and doesn't care about the temple of the Lord anymore. And it just reminds me of the urgency that we need to have as parents when it comes to instructing our kids. Do you know how many kids grow up going to church and don't stick with it when they leave mom and dad's house. This is why we need to teach kids here at church and we need to instruct our children in the way of the Lord at home. We need to do what Ephesians 6, 4 says, to bring our kids up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. This is why it's so important for you to read the scripture of the day so you can have God's word on your heart, so you can teach it to your kids, so that when your kids are old, they will not depart from it. And so, unfortunately, even though Jehoiash, the king, the boy king, he had such good instruction from Jehoiada the priest. Once the priest died, the king departed from God's way. So that really bums you out when you see a failure of that discipleship. But if you keep reading in 2 Chronicles 24, you're going to meet this guy, Zechariah, who's actually Jehoiada the priest's son. And he filled with the Spirit of God. It literally says clothed with the Spirit of God. He, the son of Jehoiada the priest, Zechariah, he stood above the people and he said to them, this is 2 Chronicles 24, 20, thus says God, why do you break the commandments of Yahweh so that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken Yahweh, he has forsaken you. But they conspired against him and by the command of the king, this is such a tragic a moment here, by the command of the king, this is literally the boy king, Joash here in Chronicles, Jehoash in Kings. 
He commanded them to stone Zechariah with stones in the court in the house of the Lord, in the temple. They kill Zechariah for his prophecy, for his word of the Lord. So that's when I realized, when I came over to 2 Chronicles 24, this wasn't a failure of discipleship because Jehoiada the priest, he may not have been able to pass it on to the boy king, but he passed it on to his own boy. Zechariah, here he is, continuing in his father's work, standing up for Yahweh, even against the king, when the king is turning away from Yahweh. Here's Zechariah speaking it. Man, let me just tell you, there is no greater joy than to see your children walking in the truth. Now, John said that in 3 John about his disciples, the people that he instructed, who he saw continue to walk, wouldn't it be great if your disciples were also your kids and you taught them the way of the Lord in your house? See that, that's what happened from Jehoiada to Zechariah, but they spilled his blood in the temple. Now, I'm telling you, Chronicles is a great cross-reference for kings, but here's something I want you to say, because I don't want to be a failure. As a teacher here at our church, Chronicles is not the book after Kings. Okay, I know that's how it is in our modern English translations of the scripture, but here on Scripture of the Day, we're gonna go in the original order of the Hebrew Bible, and that's what I've got here. This is a portable bookshelf made for me by my good friend, Jerry Richardson, and what we've got here is the books of Hebrew Scripture in Hebrew in the order they were originally given, the law, the Torah. We did this whole thing, Torology, remember, where we went through the first five books? Now we're in the prophets. That's this whole middle section right here. Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings are known as the former prophets. And then I'll let you figure out what's really after Kings because we got the rest of the prophets. We got the writings, okay? So here's something that Jesus says, and it's about Jehoash or Joash, it's about the boy king when he killed Zechariah in the temple. Here's a cross reference that just might blow your mind. It's Luke 11, 51. And Jesus talks about the righteous blood of the prophets that God sent to speak his word to his people and how unfortunately they rejected so many prophets and they killed so many of God's messengers. And so Jesus says in Luke eleven fifty one. 51, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah. That's how Jesus thinks about it. When he thinks about all the people that got killed because they were doing what was right or they were bringing the word of the Lord and they were martyred. He goes from the blood of Abel all the way in Genesis, first person killed, to the blood of Zechariah, who's the last person killed in the Hebrew Bible because he's at the end of Chronicles, Chronicles is the last book in the Hebrew Bible. So it's like they give it to you in Kings and then they review it all the way at the end of the story. Let's go through the whole line of David because we want to be ready for the king who is coming. So Kings and Chronicles, they, they talk about the same subject, but they were never meant to be next to each other. And this is the order that Jesus saw the books in. So I don't think of it as the Old Testament. I don't think of it in the order that we have today, I've learned to think of it as the Hebrew Bible. And I like to think like Jesus said, from the blood of Abel in Genesis to the blood of Zechariah in Chronicles. What a tragedy that the boy king, who would do what is right in the sight of the Lord, who would grow up in the temple and be taught the ways of Yahweh. What a tragedy that when his instructor died, he departed from the way of the Lord. But here comes the son of the instructor, the son of the priest, Zechariah, a guy who gives the word of the Lord, a guy who Jesus knows his name. See, that's, that's who we wanna be, is people who are gonna instruct the next generation in the name of Jesus, because we've studied the scriptures. 
we know the word of the Lord. We know what he says. I'm so excited to finish Kings because we're going to see the prophecy fulfilled with Josiah where he rediscovers the law. And I'm hoping it'll set our hearts on fire that we would rediscover the word. And the next book, the book that's really after Kings, we're going to get Jerry's portable bookshelf and we're going to go on a road trip, everybody. And we're going to have God open our eyes to see wondrous things from his word. We're still digging for treasure. We'll, we're still still searching for the revival that comes from the Bible because the next generation, those kids, they need to know. That's why I'm going to see you for more right here on Scripture of the Day.